Did your narcissist fight to keep you at the very end? At the very end, when you're getting ready to walk out the door, when you're getting ready to call the divorce lawyer, when you're getting ready to say, hey, this is over, we're done. I can't deal with this anymore. I can't put up with this. Was your one of the narcissists that fought at the very end or that begged or pleaded for you to stay? You'd be surprised how common it actually is this happens. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Ben Taylor. So I run Raw Motivations. I'm a self-aware narcissist that's on this platform to bring awareness about narcissism and try to work with people to help them find healing, growth, and change. I do that in two different ways, with two different types of people. I do this with narcissistic abuse victims and people that have suffered at the hands of a toxic relationship that typically has lied, gaslit, manipulated, abused, emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually, every single thing. And I try to work with these people to first off, like break them out of their trauma bond and help them find healing and growth of clearing out the narcissistic fog that's put on them so they can understand what's truth and what's reality and they can build their life and their story upon that versus the fantasy and the lies that the narcissist puts on them. Now I work with people that are in what I call limbo land and this is the area where they feel peace because they're not actively being abused in that moment, but the peace isn't always peaceful because they're detoxing from the dopamine and the chemicals, the oxytocin, everything that's going through their head that they're used to identifying to some version of love when they were with their abuser. And then we work as we transition out of that into clarity mode. And clarity mode is really developing clarity about who you are, your purpose, your vision, your values, your future. And we start down a road of getting your life coached up to be a way that you can be living your fullest potential so that whenever that narcissist or a toxic person comes in your life, you don't even get sidetracked by them. You're like, I'm so much better than that. And I've done the work that I don't even feel a pull back to that type of mentality or back to that person. Oftentimes in a narcissistic relationship, it might start off great, it devalues, it blows up, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, but what about the very end? At the end of the relationship, typically when it comes down to the point where you're kicking the narcissist out, or where you're packing your bags and you're leaving, there's a decent amount of narcissists out there that when this happens, you start to see a different side come out. A lot of people are like, when I left, when I got ready to leave, that was the first time I saw my narcissist cry. They'll say like, when I got ready to pack my bags, that was the first time she ever shed a tear for me. When I started signing the divorce papers and proceeding down that route, this is the first time he ever called me crying and saying how much he loved me and he didn't want me to go. And with this, a lot of times people start thinking like, wait a second, like maybe they're going to change. Maybe something's going to happen. There's all this type of like confusion of more fog that gets put on you. And a lot of times people wonder, like, what's actually going on? Well, you see, a narcissist is all about control. And typically it's about controlling another person. But ultimately it's about controlling their image. So as a narcissist, my goal is to control the image that I give people all my life. And so growing up, developing narcissism, like working through it, being with my wife and having narcissism, like my goal was how I'm perceived. How I'm perceived to her didn't matter as much because she was locked in. She was my wife. How I'm perceived at work, how I'm perceived at church, how I'm perceived with friends, that matters. So as a result, I want to be able to control and manipulate that image to the best of my ability so that I don't look bad to other people. So that I look like an engaged husband or a loving father or a fantastic worker or just a really good friend. And as a result, I'd want to kind of control every single thing that was possible. And at the end of a relationship, what you have is someone who's getting ready to leave, discard or, or walk out or push out a narcissist. And the narcissist seems to start fighting even more. Why is that? Well, there's a couple different things. One of the main ones is a narcissist will fight at the end to keep you so that you leave and they can say that they've tried. You might be like, how does that make sense? Like they never tried the entire relationship. Exactly. But after you leave, it'll start to mess with your head. And it prepares a perfect story for them to tell everybody else out there. 
Now, in saying this, I'm not saying don't leave your narcissist. I'm not saying that at all. And you'll never hear me counsel or coach anybody on that. Like, if you're getting abused, if you're in an abusive relationship with a narcissist and abused on any level, get out for your own safety, leave, okay? If a narcissist isn't showing honest vulnerability and consistent change, then get the hell out of Dodge, okay? But what I am saying is you'll find a narcissist sometimes at the end of a relationship that will cry, will beg, will plead, asking you not to leave for the sole purpose that then they don't have to feel like the bad guy. Because they might have treated you like shit the entire relationship, but at the very end, they say, oh, I'm trying. Like, this is, this is something we just got to work on. We just got to improve our communication. Maybe we, should, maybe we should go to that counseling finally that I've been putting off for like three years. You know, maybe we should do a book together. We should, we should listen to a podcast. Like, maybe we should talk to somebody about this. Like, whatever it might be, it's probably just a communication issue. And they'll try or they'll cry or they'll beg right at the very end. And what it does is when you walk out the door, that'll switch off. It doesn't last. It'll switch off and they'll probably call the next person, the next supply, the next person that they've already groomed to be able to fill your spot in their life. And when that happens, they'll take that and they'll take the story of what just happened and they'll manipulate and twist it to be a story that reflects them in a good light. You know, I just don't know what was going on. Like, I tried to stop her, but she she wasn't going to listen to me. Like, I, I begged for our relationship, and she just left. You know, I, I tried to convince him to stay, and I was crying, and I was so upset, but he just walked away. I can't believe you would do that to me. You have a lot of narcissists that will take that story and will twist it around so that they can tell others that they're the victim in the situation. They can tell others that they're the ones that tried. When in reality, it's a little too late because they never tried and they never worked on it at all. But at the very end, they want to pull that out to try to convince other people and sometimes to convince you that they're actually being willing to try. This oftentimes will keep people almost like as a small hoover. It'll like keep people from leaving. They're like, oh, wow, like the narcissist is actually like is crying. They're actually upset. Like they're actually like hurt that this is going on. Like maybe I should stay and give them another chance. The thing is you have to look at it and you have to think about it. Of like, hey, you already gave them six months. You already gave them a year. You already gave them five years. Some of you out there, you already gave them 20 years. What change did you see? Majority of the time, you haven't seen any. And any change that you saw was short-lived. But a narcissist at the very end of the relationship, when they pull out the tears, when they pull out the begging, the sobbing, the, the crying, the, the throwing up because they've been crying so much all of a sudden, there's like a panic of how am I going to be perceived by everyone else, by this person actually walking out on me? How am I going to look to my family that thinks I'm a godly Christian man in a family? How am I going to look to my work that thinks I'm a woman that has it all put together and I have a perfect marriage? How am I going to look to the church who thinks that I'm a deacon or a Sunday school teacher there? How am I going to look to my friends that doesn't understand why the other person just walked away? Narcissists likes to try at times at the very end of the relationship so they can twist it around and so they can protect their image. And in those moments leading up to that, you'll see the tears, you'll see the frustration, you'll see the terror at times in their eyes of the aspect and the idea of being alone and then trying to figure out how do I reconstruct this story so that I'm not the bad guy. So I don't look like the bad guy and so I don't feel like the bad guy. That's what narcissism is about. It's about image control. Controlling the image that other people see, controlling the image that you want them to see. So as a narcissist, I would be very focused on how I look, how I dress, how I appear to other people out there. Am I put together? Do I look a certain way? Do I act a certain way? While at the same time, not living the same standard at home in interactions with my wife. Narcissism is all about control. Maybe you're in a relationship today and you're like, hey, like I start to notice like these things in my life that it's all about control. Like it seems like I'm getting, being controlled. I'm being controlled with my time, my money, my, my efforts, my emotions, my perception. Like everything just seems like it's not truly me. It's not truly what is going on in my life. Like something's wrong. 
reach out for help. There's a lot of different creators on these platforms, a uh, Narc Talk community that are here to be able to help guide you and help coach you to that realization, to that clarity. And that's what I do on a daily basis. There's many other people doing on a daily basis. If you want to talk, click on the link down below to be able to schedule a time just to be able to talk and figure out what's going on and how can I help you break through the trauma bond, detox through limbo land, and get clarity and purpose and future in your life.